Hey, Master Gardeners, you've heard a lot about that spotted lanternfly. And now here we are, August in Maryland, and nymphs are beginning to emerge. And some residents have been reporting them to the Harford County Extension Office. Actually, we're just a mere three miles south of the Extension Office right now. And they've been reported as little red and then the black and white nymphs have been reported. So I figured it's about time to figure out how to make a trap in an inexpensive way. So the people that really know the most about spotted lantern flies are the Pennsylvania, the Penn State University, because they're the ones that have been doing research on the insect the longest because that's where the spotted lantern fly appeared. It's an invasive insect from Asia. They came here in 2014, came into Berks County. They believe it came in on quarry stone and products like that. And they tried to quarantine it, but they haven't been able to restrain it. It's been enlarging, enlarging. Currently, Harford County and Cecil County in Maryland have been quarantined. This summer, it's being reported in various different counties. It's also now a problem in West Virginia and Virginia. So what are you supposed to do? You can look at my shirt later on, but it says, number one thing, smash them and kill them when you see them. And here's what the little nymphs look like. Here, you'll see the black ones and there's little red ones on different colors. The adults, the red spots are not so visible on it until they fly. And the truth is they're really not very good flyers at all anyway. They're mostly hoppers. They're very hard to kill, so they're hard to smash. But as best you can, send the neighborhood children after them, smash them and kill them. But if you've got them on a tree, the favorite tree that they like is an Asian invasive tree that we already have in our yards and in our city, Baltimore City, they're prolific. This is called the tree of heaven. And it has nice smooth bark, which makes it an easy tree for us to use for putting the spotted lanternfly trap. I purchased standardized screening material and I've wrapped a skirt around the base of the tree. I've thumbtacked it tightly the insects tend to fall to the ground and the nymphs begin, oftentimes they fall on the ground and they're gonna crawl back up. They're drawn to the light. And so they're gonna be drawn inside of my Ziploc bag that I have attached to the trunk of the tree with some Velcro. So they're gonna come up inside of my homemade funnel system. And I've propped this open with just merely a little stick. The Penn State University recommends you put wire on the skirt to keep it open, but really I've put two different wooden sticks in here that they teach you and then I just prop it open a little bit. You have to come back and check on it. But it's held open and they're gonna climb up, crawl through my opening up into my bag, up into my bag above. And then once this bag gets full, they're gonna remove it. It's just rubber band on there and she'll be able to take it off, lay it on the ground and smash it and put a new bag. How is the apparatus attached to the tree? The niftiest thing I did is I have a nice thin piece of wire that came right through my screening material and I weaved it right through and it's retaining, holding the stick firmly. And so my whole trap is held very securely like that delicate little wire. So you're gonna need at least a two and a half foot piece on that. If you're doing trees that are bigger than the diameter of this one, which is a little bit bigger than nine inches, you might have to put two traps on the tree. But so what? One is better than nothing. So give it a try. And you know something? She's going to smash and kill her, her bugs that are caught inside of here. But if you're just using some of the other traps that you'll find on the internet, go to the Penn State University. They've got at least two videos how to make these traps. But you can have just a bucket of soapy water. In some of the containers, you're gonna catch the insects alive and you would just shake them into a bucket of soapy water to kill them. So come on over, let me show you how I made this. If you see spotted lantern flies in Harford County, you need to report them. You go to the MDA website, Maryland, it's mdamaryland.gov. So that's where you're gonna to go to report. So take a look at that. It's helpful so they can document where the insects are spreading to. All right, come on over and take a look at my my design. Well, it's not my design. This is, again, from the Penn State. They've got this wonderful publication that'll tell you all the parts that you need. It's called How to Build a New Style Spotted Lantern Fly Circle Trap. So this is the circle trap method. So what they recommend is standardized screen. You lay it out. I made a little V at the top of it, laid it so my and I folded my two sides in. To make life simple, I duct taped them at first to hold them still. After I duct taped them, the hardest part is attaching them to a piece of a milk jug that you've cut from a jug. And I run my hot glue gun down inside of there, and then I, I get it nice and hot, and I take my little opening at the top of my screen, I've cut a little hole, I jam my 
aluminum foil up in there so that my fingers don't get burned from the hot glue. And that helped me to get the screen attached to the side there. Now you're gonna see in the Penn State when they recommend that you put another piece of a milk jug on top and duct tape the two together and insert that up into your Ziploc bag. You can do that. I didn't take the time to do that part two on mine. I'm doing it otherwise. Once I've got this overlaid, I'm gonna put my stick. Well, you, what you're gonna do, you're gonna hang this from the tree ultimately. So how are you gonna hang it? In order to hang it, you're gonna take some slats. I just split these with a hatchet from some spare wood that we had next to the wood stove. stove and I lay it up in the back and I'm gonna staple it to the back of the, to the plastic jug. Let me give you another tip too. I'm gonna to staple this on there and I'll get it attached to my milk jug. So that's gonna hold, support the back of mine. Now, let, let me show you another tip. Let me disconnect this. Another tip that I found really handy. They recommended that you just glue the screen on, but look at this, watch this. Just feed that screen up into a standardized stapler and weave it up under there and you can staple the screening material right to the milk jug lid. And this was super easy to do. One, two, and then just roll it around again, scoot to the other side of the skirt and weave it up into my stapler all the way up and staple it in. This is a lot easier than using that glue gun over and over inside there. You just have to be careful to not get your fabric overlapped and then staple, staple. And that'll, that secures it perfectly to make it, to make your nice little skirt. And then you're gonna attach two sticks, one stick in the back and one stick in the front. And I use my heavier duty staple gun for attaching them. So one's gonna go in the front of it, one's gonna go in the back. And then when I wire it onto the tree, this kind of brings some stability. It's helpful to use one of the sticks to prop it open. Once you staple it on there, the other stick is gonna stick out when you staple it on because you're stapling it to the lid of the, and it actually holds it open somewhat. And again, I told you over there, if it doesn't sit open wide enough, then just jam a stick up inside of it. And then you use the thumbtacks to put the skirt all the way around. Put the wide part of the skirt against the tree and the short part of the skirt sticks out in front. And that's how you make the spotted lantern fly trap. Those are the basic supplies. Here, the very last thing I do is I just used a, I cut the top off my Ziploc bag like that. And then I just pinch it all together. And then I open it over top of my jug. So I'm just doing it like a student, a little kid's ponytail. And I put the rest of them in there. And then I'm, it takes a little work, but I put my rubber band around and I'm gonna attach my bag right on there. It's gonna take some work. You might have to have a buddy with you to attach my bag on there. And the bag will have to be replaced when it gets full of insects. So it'll take some work to figure out how to get your bag properly attached. And then I put a piece of Velcro on the back of it. I use these two pieces of Velcro tape to support the bag because even the Penn State flyer says sometimes the bag tilts over and that can be a problem. So I just Velcroed it to the tree. So you don't, you know this insect's not gonna just go to the tree of lantern, I mean the tree of heaven tree. It's gonna go to maples, it's gonna go to walnuts, lots of different species of trees. So just once you start seeing them in your yard, you can buy these traps online so there's recommendations in the Penn State Flyer on how to do that. Here's how to identify the tree. Here they are. When they're juveniles like this, they smell like stinky feet. They have large compound leaves. And one of the easy ways to identify is they have a gland on the base of the leaflets. And hopefully you can see this. See that little gland right there? And there's another gland here. Those little glands and little notches at the base of the leaflet, that's a pretty good indicator that it's not, uh, you can confuse it with black walnut and you can confuse it with sumax. But that little notch on the base of the leaf is a really super good indicator. And then the stinky smell that occurs on the young juvenile ones. The other thing that I see at this time of the year is look at this bronzing color. I noticed driving here today, this bronze colored foliage. I see that a lot on the tips of the plants. So there you go, Master Gardeners. Spotted lanternfly. Sorry to say, but it might be coming to a neighborhood near you.